Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again for another webinar. Um, my name is Sonia Siddiqui and joining me today is Colin McLean. Hello. And he's going to be talking about how to have a mindset for success. Okay, hello, my name is Colin McLean and I'm a career blacksmith. And what I do is I mold and sculpt your mind to be successful. So today we're talking about having a successful mindset. And here it is, Mindset for Career Success. Now this webinar is for those who are feeling stuck in their careers, maybe they're feeling defeated in their job search, they're tired of not getting any strong leads, so they need to find unique ways to get ahead of the competition, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, you know, my name is Colin McLean. I'm a career blacksmith, mold and sculpting your mind to be successful. I've got about 20 plus years experience working in the industry of recruitment as well as um, employment counseling, job development. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an author as well. I recently launched the keepmovingforward.ca online learning platform. And here's my book. It's called A Funny Thin Happened on the Way to My Career, 50 Practical Rules to Get the Job You Want. Now, this book is on Amazon.ca. It's also on paperback in Kindle. Now, this book was started, was created out of pain. That was my pain when I was unemployed and struggling for about two and a half years looking for work. And then I sat down and I found out what I was doing wrong, and I found out a formula, and I implied the formula in this book. So if you want something that's unique, it's funny, it's not like the traditional self-help books of finding employment, this will at least make you laugh and give you solutions so you can start moving your career forward. This webinar. Now, in this webinar, you're going to learn the following. The little nuances that don't land you your dream career. It's a little shift you got to do, and if you can figure that out, you can definitely start moving your career forward. Next is how to become aware of your compulsive career self-sabotage, also known as CCSS. That's holding you back. After that, we're going to talk about the benefits of your barriers and how to get past the gatekeepers of your success. And last but not least, we're going to cover how to prep properly and score big in your next interview. So, are you all ready? I sure hope so. Okay, so many of you are looking to move your careers forward and something's not happening. You're kind of stuck. Something's missing. Now, let's look at it. Is it the resume? Like, what do you think? Is it a good resume you need for moving your career ahead? Definitely. Okay, that's true. It does help, but there's a, there's a statistics out there that says that about, on average, in recruitment, you get about probably 100 to about 150, maybe 200 resumes for one posting. I was in, in recruitment, and I've experienced the exact same thing, where there's only one job posting position open and you get all these resumes so sometimes you may send a resume in late sometimes it may be and it's not targeting the resume one quick story i'll share with you about a resume is i had a job posting for an az truck driver and it says clearly you need to have two years experience driving a az 18 wheeler truck and you have to loading unloading and you no air brakes, and I guess one resume I'm looking at, and it says customer service all the way through. And I'm thinking, maybe this guy sent me the wrong resume. I'll just call him. I'm just kind of curious because everyone else has DZ, AZ, two years, eight years of driving. So I take the time to call him, and I talk to him, and he said to him, "You applied for the driving position." I go, "Yes." Go. And I said to him, "Do you know it's an 18 wheeler truck?" And he goes. Well, yeah, but I, can, I have a G driver's license for a car. Can I drive a truck? I go, no, no, you can't because you got air brakes. It's a huge vehicle. You could actually kill someone. And he says, well, how hard is it to really learn? And I go, listen, this is not going anywhere. I'll look for customer service for you, but I got up right now. I'm looking for qualified people. Could you imagine if I sent to my employer a uh, person who has never had any experience, never sat in a truck and told them this is the guy you want to hire? They think I'm crazy. So it's not the resume although it does help. What about having a great HR connection? That you know someone in HR, what do you think? Yes or no, is that all you need? That's what's missing, they got that. I think it would be a great idea to actually have a connection with a hiring manager. Yeah. 
um, HR, not so much, but why not? I mean, I think it would help. Okay. Um, it's true, but unfortunately, the answer is no, because another story I got to tell you, I have a lot of stories. Being in recruitment, you have connection with the HR manager, you have connections with the owner, and they say, find you someone of this certain skill set. So you go, great, you spend two days, you find the person. Call the hiring manager back, and it says, you know what, it got kind of slow, we're not hiring right now. So even though I knew the manager or the owner of the operation, I couldn't send the person, mm -hmm. and it was kind of frustrating. Sometimes hiring managers get really busy. They go to other meetings, and you're trying to connect, and it doesn't happen. So that's not the case. Last but not least, what if you have all the experience in the world, and you're qualified, and you're so good that they want to do a university of how great you are of your school? What do you think? No, because what if I don't like you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I turned on people because, uh, not because I didn't like them, but they were arrogant. Mm -hmm. um, they came in, they had all the experiences, and they were applying for a position. And I tell them, well, you're going to have to learn a new skill set because the owner likes doing it this way, and they refuse to. I've actually hired people who had less skill, and they got hired on the spot because they had a great attitude, you know, they're willing to learn. So it's not always the skill set, it's not always the HR connection, nor it's the resume. So then what exactly is it? A hint, it weighs three to four pounds. It's inside of that three or four pounds that matters. What do you think it is? Tell me to answer that. Okay. Well, just wait. Okay. I can't. <laughs> it's the brain, okay? Well, what it really is, is having the mindset for success. They say, like, I read a couple of um, books about survival, and they said any crisis situation, be it wilderness or like a um, maybe a terrorist attack or something, it's not the person who's the strongest, the most skilled yep. person. It's the person who's got the mindset to survive. Mm -hmm. And when you have the mindset, anything's possible. Now, this is on the drawing I did. Kind of looks like me, doesn't it? <laughs> now, this is the little nuance, nuances that don't land you the dream career. Now, I told you earlier that on average, you get about 100 resumes for one position, uh, sometimes more. And the stickler is you end up only having a time frame of sending six of all those 100 plus resumes to a hiring manager for a face-to-face -face, face -face interview. But you've got to first interview them because the worst thing you can do is send an applicant only on the resume to a hiring manager. We'll cover that very shortly. So I'm looking for mistakes. I'm looking for spelling mistakes. I'm looking for resumes not targeted. So it doesn't, I don't want to be able to scroll down your whole resume to get the second point of a job posting on page two near the end. I want to see it up front. As well, I look for maybe if there's a pattern of broken histories for employment. Like if you're getting a job every like six months, three months, it's not contract work. It's not the evil employer, it's definitely you, the person who's not stable, I can't send them. So when I do narrow it down to six people, this is what I come up with. Now I'm putting you in the shoes of the recruiter, that would be myself. What I would see, now all these people did exist in some form or another when I interviewed them. You've got, would you pick A, you have to pick three, A, B, C candidate, D candidate, E candidate, and F candidate. Now, first impressions are key. Okay. So I have a poll, but they can only choose one. Oh, choose one? Okay. Yeah. Which one would they choose? Yeah, so we, I'm going to launch a poll. Okay. And then I guess they could choose mm -hmm. one. So let's see what people are saying. So who's the best one they would say? B is getting most of it. Yeah, good. B and D? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I would probably have had three ascent because what you want to do is when you're interviewing people, you want to have an extra amount of people just in case. And because what happens is sometimes people don't show up, and then if you only have three, and the employer says you want three, and only two show up, then your scrambling doesn't look good. So the three that I would choose definitely B. I would choose D for David and E. 
Now, do you notice anything unique about these people in this image? Besides ones in gray and the ones in color? They're all looking to the side. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the same person, actually. So the women are all the same. I just did some little Photoshop and changed oh, okay. around slightly. And the men is the same guy. Now let's look at number A. Many times I have encountered a person who's got this anger coming to me for an interview. And on paper, they all look perfect, they all have the same skill set, but definitely the ones and the target of the resumes. And they come in, and A's sitting before me. Now, would you want to go on a long road trip with A? Right exactly, right? Because there's, there's some issues. We all had that. When I was unemployed, I was angry, but it wasn't that bad. And I remember this one case, this lady I was interviewing, she was pretty much jumping down my throat. Every question I asked, she was in the defense. And I remember she kept talking about every job she had, she had the boss from hell. And I'm thinking, how could you possibly have like six jobs and all of your bosses are the bosses from hell? It's pretty much impossible that it's you, the person. Moving on to B, B seems more calm, confident. C seems a little bit creepy. Uh, and if you don't feel comfortable with the person, then you wouldn't send them to the next phase of the interview. D is pretty much confident, happy, looks like a people person. E may be a little bit serious, but they could probably get the work done. And F um, scares me because F seems a little bit depressed, low energy. And when you have someone who's depressed and low energy, it's hard for them to excel at work because if you have to keep poking them for an answer or poking them for response, who's got time for that? We all have crazy days and at work and it's just you don't want that kind of person working on your team okay so now your beliefs shape your reality and they say that we talked about first impressions earlier about how which person would you take and many times the your internal belief system of who you believe you are ripples out to what people um, see you as so your beliefs turn into actions and they end up in results. So, for example, there's two applicants here, Joe Schmo, Sarah Smith. And Joe's internal belief system is that he feels he's not good enough. And when you feel you're not good enough, what happens? What do you think? Some things. You're attracting the same kind of energy that you're giving out. To. Yeah. So you have lack of confidence, you're not giving eye contact, you're kind of distant. You don't reach out to people, like you're kind of hiding behind applying to jobs online. So you're just only online, you're sending your resumes out to indeed work hopeless, the other ones. And you don't get hired, is the next what happens. The other one, which is Sarah Smith, she believes she has value, but she hasn't found the right fit yet. Her actions, she's more confident, more optimistic, she's feeling more connected. She has several job um, search methods, not just relying on just applying online. Results, she gets several offers. Now, this the difference between the two applicants is that, not because they're men and women, but Joe Schmo is suffering from compulsive career self-sabotage, and Sarah's not. Compulsive career sabotage is a thing that people do, and I did it myself, whereby you're looking for work, and you're feeling kind of down, defeated, you have a belief system that you can't, you are often depressed, low energy, you're taking wrong actions for the incorrect actions, and or you're not even taking action at all. It's a vicious cycle, this keeps happening. And then the first week of being unemployed turns into a month, two months, three months, and you're just doing the same thing repetitively. And I think that Albert Einstein said it best, his take on CCSS, was the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. That's Albert Einstein. And I have been guilty of that when I was looking for work. So when you have your CCSS, the first thing you gotta do is do a self-diagnostic. You know when your car's broken, they take the car in, they connect to a machine. What you got to do is look for emotional and physical patterns that are occurring whenever you make an attempt to move your career forward. Is it maybe you're not getting the interviews? So maybe your resume needs changing. Maybe you are enclosing yourself in a cocoon 
don't want to see people because what's the first thing people ask you next to your name when you go out to a function? What do you do? Exactly. <laughs> what do you do for a living? And then I remember being unemployed and I wanted to not go to events because every time I have to act, tell people I am unemployed, I'm unemployed. I'm feeling like really, really small. Everyone else is being successful. So this is what happens a lot of times. If you can look at what patterns you're creating in your life, you can actually get off the road and change it. But it takes time, and I teach people about that. Now let's focus on the two people with the VR um, goggles on. Now steps to fixing your CCSS, your compulsive career sub sabotage. Now you gotta guard yourself around negative people. Negative people, you know, they're all in our lives. It could be our spouses, it could be our cousins, other family members, it could be coworkers, whatever the case may be. They are like the um, anchor covered in glue and muck, mud. If you're like sinking or you're trying to keep your head afloat in a sea of uncertainty, they would throw you the anchor and just weigh you back down and you end up drowning. So take your eyes off those people because they're not going to help you at all. Spend your time being more comfortable with yourself. Now that's exactly how I found my wife. Uh, so this applies to career, moving career forward, as well as dating and finding your, your soulmate. When I stopped trying to look for others for my comfort and became more comfortable with who I was, then she came in. Right? I wasn't the desperate kind of a guy looking, kind of finding someone, oh please, you know, hook up with me. It was just one of those things that many people experience that where they go to a job interview and that is desperation in their eyes. I've had that. And it scares the hiring manager mm -hmm. of you're going to grab them and please hire me, please hire me. It's not a charity. It's a connection what they're developing. Key here is surround yourself with positive people. Now the guy next to the lady with the VR glasses, does he seem like a positive person? <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not. He's going through some depression, some kind of anxiety, and those are the same thing of the anchor pulling you back down. You spend all your energy and resources and you don't have that kind of time to spend when you're looking to move your career forward. The other person is some kind of demonic guy and that could be the boss from hell, it could be an evil co-worker. We've had evil co-workers. I've never really had a boss from hell, just a difficult boss, but never a boss from hell. And if you keep focusing on that, whatever you focus on, you kind of create in your life. So you have stress and stuff happening, stay away from the stress. So Keep those VR glasses on and focus on yourself with a positive mindset and you'll get through hell with your field that you're in. Now, how to benefit from your barriers? Like knowledge is power and true power is being aware of your limited beliefs. So visualize this, you're in a car and you're driving and then it's a fork in the road. Now on, on the right side, there's like a um, dragon or even monster and it's blowing fire. On the other side is just flowers. Which side are you going to go to? The left side of the flowers or where the dragon's going? Oh, obviously to the flowers. Well, you know, not everyone does that, right? What I used to do is I'm focusing the dragon, focusing the dragon, and then I end up getting burned and it doesn't work out. Did you ever hear about accidents happening on the highway? And it's an open highway, it's winter time, and there's one tree on the highway, and the car is wrapped around the tree, hits the tree. Why is that? Because the person is looking at the tree, thinking, uh -huh. I hope we don't hit the tree, it's slippery, I hope we don't hit the tree. And when it happens, their mind shifts them and guides them to that tree, and they should not have hit it if it's the only tree mm -hmm. on the whole highway. It's exactly what we do when we're looking for work, we're trying to get ahead, and we're thinking, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Now, fear forward. You don't have to love it, but I tell my children this, you got to fear forward, even though you're scared, it will make you um, more feel accomplished if you conquer your, fear, your fears. Now, what do you think fear stands for if it's, if it's an acronym? F-E-A-R. Um, I'm gonna let you do that one. <laughs> okay, no worries. I know I'm throwing it under, under the bus, but no worries. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Many times we have this fear and we think, oh, I don't think I can do it, but when you, at least do it and you succeed, you're so much better and more empowered. It's like when I went skydiving, we're in the plane, and the plane's a little rickety plane, and we're up like 10,500 feet, and I gotta step out of the plane, and this little, little platform the size of my foot. And there's another instructor with me, and the cameraman, we get on and we jump off, 
and you're falling and you're thinking this is an amazing experience but first you may look at the plane it's a little dot in the sky and you're falling pre-falling and they're holding on to you and then you release your chute and then they separate now that if i didn't do that i would never know the experience but fear stopped me but then i got over it watch your words they are like seeds so we think about of like i'm tired i'm exhausted i'm defeated what happens to your results in your life you know you don't get what you're looking for mm -hmm. i remember when i was in the import export industry i had an opportunity to apply for a promotion it was to move out west and it was myself and another a young um, person but I had this fear and this belief that I'm not good enough. Why would they want to hire me? I'm still the student. Even though I was working there full time, I kept thinking, this other guy's better. I'll never get it. Did I get it? No, I didn't. The other guy got it. So if I had changed my words to, yes, I can. It's possible. This is just a little challenge now. I'll get over it. That's will start changing your life. So watch your words because the words are very, very powerful. Now, you ever watch those dog movies about the dog's the hero of the story, and there's a burning fire and the house on fire, and the mother's screaming that her baby child is in the house, when burned up, and the dog runs through the fire, he's navigating his way through the flames, things are falling down, the dog grabs the baby. Well, the dog's a canine, and the canine here stands for being creative. If you want to get past the gatekeeper, you're going to have to start getting creative. Don't just keep calling, calling, calling all the time and keep rejecting you. You've got to find who else can you talk to. Maybe someone on LinkedIn, I can maybe do that approach to get around them. But if you keep doing the same thing, that's what um, Albert Einstein said is Sandy is the same thing, expecting different results. Approachable. We're all stressed, we all have our challenges, but would you rather approach a snapping dog? That's snarling or a dog that's wagging its tail. <laughs> Who would you rather approach? Well, obviously, the one with the wagging tail. tail, right? Exactly, right? But many of us, how we're thinking, how we're projecting ourselves, it's maybe something of maybe a negative portrait. I get it, life's going to be hard. And then people don't want to be around you when that happens. So you want to be approachable. And I have a course called Knockout Networking. And you want to network because they say, was it? over 85% of all success or job opportunities is through networking. So, true story, I, in recruitment, I was looking up many uh, companies that are hiring. So I'll call them, and then I find out that they weren't really hiring, they're only gathering resumes. So if you're only sending resumes to these job boards, a lot of times the hiring manager isn't even looking. But when you actually network, that's how things change. Like when I lost my job years ago, I was struggling, but I started networking. My wife's friend, who we don't really talk to too much, she just lives other ends of the city. She called my wife saying, I know your husband's into training, and my friend just called me, they're looking for a trainer at the school board for TDSB, for similar program like access employment. Lo and behold, went to it and I got the job. But if I, I looked on the website, I didn't see this mm -hmm. job posting, I would have missed it in a million years, but she called me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got the job. And that's what started me on my journey to becoming the career blacksmith. Interesting. Now, you got to be interesting. Now, just pretend for a moment you're going on, on a date. So, yeah. What would you say um, to the person if you're on a, on a blind date? You met them. What are some questions you'd ask them? Um, probably about, you know, again, what do you do for a living? Yeah, what the guy <laughs> says, uh, I don't know, I sit on the couch and play video games. Oh, I would look for my exit <laughs> strategy. <laughs> okay, another, exactly. And another question you may want to ask is, what do you do for fun? And the person says, oh, I don't know, I just maybe watch TV. So you're not really feeling a connection, no. right? The same thing with when you're networking, meeting employers, meeting other people. You've got to be ex interesting, like experience new things. Right? Start a conversation because when you have something of interest, you'll find that there's more of a connection with the person and they're more likely to remember you. Now, nimble. you got to be nimble and that means be flexible, adaptable. Um, many times as a recruiter, I would find a, a person, their resume, and they're perfect for the role. I'm thinking, great, can you come in tomorrow at 10 o'clock? I say 10 o'clock because some people have children that are dropping yeah. school, so I try to make it easy for them. 10 o'clock, I'm going to meet with you, do your application. It's about an hour and a half process. I want to really find the right person. And they say, no, I can't. And I ask them, well, why can't you? Is it dog's Go, no, I just can't. OK, 
okay, well, what about maybe coming at one o'clock? I figured they have to do stuff. One o'clock is a good time. Still pass rush hour traffic. Well, uh, no. And I asked them, are you employed? And they say no. And they said, well, we'll consider coming maybe next week. So I'm thinking, how bad do you really want it? I know they're not working on the cure for cancer. That's why they're not coming. It's because they don't really want it, right? Yeah. So you have to, like opportunities always closing and opening, opening and closing like doors. So you have to be ready to jump through that door, okay? Being the executioner, and I'm talking the guy in the galleys um, with the hood on and hanging people. This is like the kind of person who says they're going to do something. They send out, like they say, I want to send, get your resume by four o'clock tomorrow. You're sending it to the employer at uh, 3.45 early. You're not waiting for them to get call you several times to remind you, you just get it done. Those kind of people that people remember. Now, I'm gonna share my worst interview ever. So I was never, I've been on top, been on the bottom, and I prefer being on top. Now, I remember when, not many people know my story, but I worked for Import Exports. It was a uh, British insurance firm who insured the commodities. I worked there 15 years, got married, had a beautiful daughter, raised her for about six months on parental leave, came back to work, and I lost my job to restructuring because we got bought out by an American firm. And I'm unemployed, devastated. I'm doing that compulsive career self-sabotage of fear, loathing, feeling I'm not good enough. I'm not exercising. I gained like about 20 pounds over my normal weight. I'm depressed. I don't want to get into bed most mornings. And I'm not getting any employers calling me. I'm sending the same resume out, not targeting it. It's just a disaster. So one day I get a phone call. And I'm amazed because the phone isn't wrong in like two and a half years. So I blow off the dust off of my phone <laughs> and the cobwebs. And I clear it off and say hello. And this lady on the other line says to me, hello, Mr. McLean, can you come in for an interview tomorrow at 10 o'clock? So I said, sure, I'll go. What's the company? And she tells the company, I don't remember applying because I'm sending yeah. any kind of job, 10,000 resumes a month. That's what I'm doing. So I go there and my CCSS or my screaming monkeys of negativity are screaming in my ears saying, you can't do it. You can't do it. Turn back. Why are you going to this? You make a fool of yourself. It's no one's gonna hire you. And I muster the energy. Why? Because I have a child, I've got a wife, and I gotta support. I'm not stepping up as a family man. So I start walking through the parking lot, and at the front door, there's the brand new Mercedes Benz model back of the, the day. It's jet black, it's beautiful. I know that's the owner. So I'm thinking, oh no, that's like this is the big time. So I go in, beautiful office. And if you ever watched that movie, Wolf of Wall Street, I guess the main character is Jordan Belford. True story. Well, this guy I'm looking at, he's a little heavier set. He's got a slick back here. He's got a pinky ring of diamond on it. And he reeks of money. He, like, he looks success. He's like a hardcore salesman who sells his own grandmother to make. <laughs> and is that me? That's not me. I'm more of like getting to know you kind of a thing, making connections. So I go there and he asks me a couple of questions. Of, like, Tell me about yourself. And I'm mumbling, I'm stuttering, and see the bald guy on the um, right of me there? That's what he look, it gives me that kind of look, like, are you, are you for real? Then he asks me another question, and I'm stumbling, mumbling, and he gives me the look of the lady next to me there, right? And I know I wasted his time. And he says, there's a bell out there, if you can't do the job, just bring it and leave. And it pretty much ends my shortest interview ever, it's probably like 10 minutes. And it ends with him giving the look at the guy below the hat, old man, of don't call me, I'll call you. So I was devastated because this is my one time of shine and I blew it. But it got better. To help my wife, I figured this out. How to score big in your next interview. She primed me. She did interview questions over and over again until I wanted to cry. Um, she got me more confident. Now you got to be the ninja, and being ninja is ninjas know their target. They know where it is. Like they'll know that if the target is a man, man is red here. Man goes jog in the morning at maybe six. He goes to Starbucks at six thirty. Picks up his latte, leaves at six thirty-seven, and drives back home, leaves for work at maybe seven o two. So you have to do your research and know the employer and be able to answer the questions and be nimble and make a connection that you've done your research as opposed to, please give me the job, I'm a good person because that doesn't fly, right? 
do not rely on your resume. Many people have done that. I've done that, whereby they say, well, the resume is here. So my resume, let me ask the question, so my resume, but the resume is not a person. It's only a little key to get you through the front door, and that's all. The rest is up for you to sell. So it goes back to, once again, um, a dating and making connection. If you went on a, um, on a first date with someone, and you met them through some dating site, and you ask them a question. Every time you ask a question, they're pulling up the app saying, you see the questions right here, your answer. I like walks in the park. And the next question, you see I work here as an accountant. You would think this person is kind of weird, right? So you got to be confident because if you're not confident, no one wants to really hire you. Not cocky, but confident of you know who you are, you know what you have to give, the value you bring, and you have to have that sort of um, kind of mindset. You got to be the best salesperson to your dreams. Now, for example, what if you were going to buy a car and you went into a car dealership and um, asked me a question, pretend I'm a car salesman, what would you ask? You want to buy a car, it doesn't matter what car it is. I would ask about the car. Okay, like what cars I have. And what if I said to you, oh, I don't know, I have some cars. I got a red car and a blue car and a black car. Well, I'll be going to different dealers. Exactly, right? <laughs> so many people are not selling themselves, right? It's not being cocky, but if you've got a dream of being career forward, so you can take your family on vacation, you can start living a, a nice lifestyle, then you've got to be the best person. Because if you can't sell your dream, no one's going to invest in your dream. No employer's going to do that. So really know yourself and know what they're looking for to add value. Okay? Now, after having the right mindset, it's going to lead you to success. Now, it doesn't, remember we talked about the resume, we talked about it wasn't maybe the HR manager. When someone has the right mindset for success, they attract opportunities to them. People remember them. And that concludes the um, webinar. And if you want to learn more about the course Mindset for Career Success, you can go to Keep Moving Forward. .ca. Thank you, Colin. Yes. Um, I hope everyone was able to take away whatever they came here to hear. Um, we're going to give you a few moments to type in your questions into the questions tab, and then we'll start taking your um, questions. So if you can go to the questions tab, type in your questions. Colin is here, and he'll be able to answer them for you. Um, and... I guess we'll leave it here so people can see and they can check out your website. Okay, thanks. And great presentation. What made you come up with this one? That's through my pain of <laughs> just struggling miserably. Like I, I'm the kind of guy that they talk about employment access back in the day of don't do this on your resume, don't do this in interviews. <laughs> I was that guy actually. And because I'm a career blacksmith, I mold and sculpt your mind to be successful. And many times, it's not the resume, it's just a little tweaking I gotta do. And when you can tweak your mind, you can be unstoppable. Um, so if this is from a guy who had a lot of self-defeat, a lot of negative thinking, then he can, and then I was able to do much things in my life. All right. Through the positive mindset. Thank you. Okay, so Alexandra has a question. What type of mindset should I have during an interview? Good story. The mindset you should have is the job is yours. Now, to go back to my story of when my wife was priming me, remember that first interview I did, I did horrible, I bombed, it was just disgusting. Well, my wife primed me and I knew that this is my last chance. The phone isn't ringing and I've got to get a um, job. And I go for the interview and I'm confident, I'm saying, I don't care if there's 10 people, 100 people, this job is definitely mine. So I go in there, I do a presentation on training, and they're looking my stuff, and then I got shocked because after I answered the questions, and I didn't have any more questions, they ran away, and I'm thinking, was I that bad? And I start having flashbacks, thinking, oh my gosh, this is the exact same thing with the slick back here guy, Wolf of Wall Street, I can't believe I just did this. How am I going to tell my wife this? And they came running back out with this form and said, no, no, sign the documents. You're the one. You're the one. So by having a positive mindset and knowing the job is mine and being confident and prepared like the ninja, I was able to convince them that I was definitely the one. And then from there, I got sort of working. It was part-time. And then they liked me so much, they gave me a job as a marketing specialist for three sites. And it just started climbing from there. But 
It was just a mindset believing that yes, I can and I know that I can. Thank you. Uh, next question is from um, Mama Dill wants to know a good mindset is great, but how does uh, how can this be reflected in a resume at first meeting with a recruiter or just you know putting your resume out there? How can you reflect a great mindset on a resume? True. Well, you can. What I tell people is quantify your resume. Mm -hmm. If you can talk about your successes you've accomplished. So, for example, if you say you've increased sales at a company, how much was it? Approximately ballpark? Was it 20%? Was it 5%? Was it 1%? Most times people are more attracted to you than the resume. Remember we talked about earlier, don't let the resume sell you? Mm -hmm. Resume gets you in the door, but it's up to you. When you meet a recruiter, is you've got to shine. And I remember one story. This lady was underqualified for a position. She went for a position as, I believe it was, for um accounting or something and her english wasn't that great but then i'm talking to her and i see her hands are very very tiny like a child's hands and i think mean, this is kind of freaky because i don't think i could hire her for an accountant because her english isn't that great but when i look at her hands i have another role as an endoscopic repair technician the guy who um you know the little tube that goes in your body in operations and they see the cancers and they're twisting and turning it Okay. <laughs> exactly, right? So I'm a doctor. She's got a great personality. She's got a great mindset. She's positive. And I sent her for that, and they loved her. And, she, and I found out later she did acupuncture. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Tiny hands, nimble hands, great personality, and she's still employed at the place last I checked. Awesome. Yeah, so just because you're applying for one job, it may be another job you're applying for, but it was her personality, not a resume that got her the job. And I've seen that happen a lot with our clients as yeah. well, when they're like, oh, I'm an engineer and that's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. But then they end up selling engineering equipment and making more money exactly. and they never realize. And that's happened to a lot of our clients. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, be open to anything that could happen or come your way. Um, Pankaj is quite a question. Um, is there any kind of a professional training provided for a mindset for career success? Training, um, well, let's come to me. Come to keepmovingforward.ca and I can definitely train you on how to be a successful mindset because what I teach people is creating your positive I am as part of the course and your I am statement of I am powerful, I am whatever, that's the trigger. Remember we talked about you're on the, on the road driving and there's a fork in the road and one's the dragon and the other one's the uh, flowers. Well, many of us seem to focus on the dragon and we get burned up with the I am statement. It keeps you on the course, even though you have some fear and some habits mm -hmm. creep in. So that's what I teach. Okay. I keep moving forward.ca. So there you go. The website's on the screen right now. Check it out and you can contact Colin. And I think he'll be more than happy to help. Um, Archit has a question and, you know, just like any other new immigrant, he's saying, um, you know, he keeps trying all these different methods to apply mm -hmm. for jobs, applying online, um, you know, on LinkedIn, but he keeps getting this negative feeling that, you know, he's not going to end up with anything. Mm -hmm. And how can he get over that negative mindset, especially when time's going fast and, you know, bills are piling up, been you, there. you've been there, we've all been there at one point. Um, you know, so speaking from that, how can we help him? Okay, question. How's that current mindset helping you of thinking that time's running out, thinking that you're not going to find a job? Is it working for you, yes or no? It's Clearly it's not. <laughs> so let's try something new. Change your environment, change your mindset, change your reality. Now, I'm not talking that you are in fairy land and everything's going to be hokey pokey, but find, I tell my clients, one of the first things that I do is find your happy place. Like, what do you do for fun? And try to focus on that. Because when you have fun in your life and you start to be happy, your life will start to change differently. you got to be with people in that slide of the VR goggles where they're ignoring what's around them and focusing on their true happiness. If you can at least start that and then start networking. Now, you're a newcomer. Not sure where you're from, but there's many um, community things around based on your culture. These people have employment. So if, for example, you're maybe from India, mm -hmm. I'm not from there. Now, who's more likely to be hired? If I went into um, like a temple mm -hmm. and was in temple, would they hire me or the hire the other person who's from India, most likely? 
right? Probably that person. Exactly. It's not that it's not racism, it's not discrimination. It's just that you feel more comfortable, you can mm -hmm. speak the language. So start targeting those kind of people. Let them be a stepping stone for you to move forward in your career. But you gotta step somewhere, at least make a step in one direction. Or at least build a network wherever possible. Yeah. So, you know, you can start from the people that you know, um, that you're comfortable mm -hmm. with, and then expand going from there as well. Um, exactly. And like you said, focus on something that's, that makes you happy, your yeah. happy place, your fun place. A lot of people, when they're applying for jobs, they're, they're doing it, you know, Monday to Sunday, and there's no break. So yeah. you should make a schedule. Like, applying for jobs should be a job. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you're doing it nine to three, let's say. And, or, you know, you drop your kids off to school, you sit down 10 to three, 10 to four, um, you're applying to jobs, um, really working on your resume, targeting it, and make sure that you keep your weekends free. There's no applying for jobs on the weekend. I yeah. mean, you need to make sure that, you know, you're giving yourself that happy time, your time, time with your family, so that you don't get that so frustrated that, you're just gonna not get anything back and you're just giving out negative vibes again. So hope that helps. Um, um, my case Warren wants to know, um, why is it that resumes don't get shortlisted? Why? Uh, yeah. It's based on timing. So sometimes you may have like maybe 10 resumes and I've had this before whereby we get the 100 resumes coming in, it comes in the first week, the position's open for a month. I do not have time to go through every single one, so I'll pick the first 10 or so and call it from there. And then oh. I'll put the other ones to one side, hopefully that if something else comes up, I can call them. But that's what I've had to do because I can only handle so much and that's why. So It's not fair. And that's not, that's <laughs> not fair, but when you think this way, when you go, grocery shopping, why don't you pick the fifth apple on the on the far left? <laughs> <clears throat> you don't do that because you just see what's in front of you, right? Yeah. So think of it that way. It's split timing. So if you're applying to stuff late all the time or or um, just before it ends, most likely they've already made their decision, right? Still apply. There's chances for Oh yeah, applying. definitely still yeah. apply. Please don't think that, oh, today's the last day shouldn't apply, because you never know. Maybe yeah. they haven't found anyone and they might extend the date. So always do apply, but, just but you wait. are right yeah. that, you know, they're probably going to pick the first top 10 or yeah. whatever it is. But still apply. Do not let that discourage you, because I know um, there's been chance, uh, there's been lots of times when our clients have come back and said it was the last day and they yeah. still took me in. Or like even, I've done that too. Or it even after the yeah. last day, they still applied and they've mm -hmm. gotten it because, you know, they probably haven't found anybody yet. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that side, but it's the <laughs> truth. The truth hurts. Yeah, it does. It's like, oh gosh. <laughs> um, Okay, so where are we here? So Aurea has a question. Mm -hmm. um, submitted their resume to a hiring manager and she said that she would call um, them back for an interview, still waiting. Should they reach out again and how should they reach I out? I usually wait like three days okay. and find out. And then if they have a call back, um, we have another maybe two days or one day. Because sometimes what happens is the employer gets really busy and yeah. they have a crisis, and they have to deal with that crisis first, and the hiring isn't on the foremost, foremost importance. Mm -hmm. It's maybe item number five on their list of importance. Right. So give them some patience. If the if you call like once, you send an email, you know, I say just move on, right? You want to be in a situation, I tell us to many of uh, my clients, you want to be in a situation where you're not waiting on one employer, you've got many to choose from, mm -hmm. and that's a powerful feeling to be in where everyone's calling you, what many people do is they apply to one and they don't apply anywhere else and they're waiting, waiting, waiting. Mm -hmm. And then the employer, unfortunately, for whatever reason, doesn't call them back and then they're stuck. So always be proactive. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Avro wants to say that from a uh, past work, uh, networking experience, some people are not interested to continue talking <clears> to you <throat> after they find out that you're unemployed and actively looking for work. Any suggestions to overcome this? Well, that's not the person you should be talking to. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess from my question. Not every opportunity <clears throat> or every person is really for you. And don't take it personally. Those who want to talk to you, are the ones which are open to receive. Now, I remember a um, story way back when it was I was doing the instructing for uh, newcomers, 
and this one newcomer was applying for a job at a bank. And she had a functional resume because when she came from, I think it was India, over to here, she got the survival job working warehouse, warehouse all the time for about a year and a half. So in India, she had about maybe like five or seven years experience doing uh, working at a bank as the bank manager's assistant. Mm -hmm. And then she comes over to Canada and she couldn't find work, so she gets a job working warehouse. Well, the bank that she networked with saw her resume and says, oh, um, we don't like functional format. We prefer chronological. And I'm thinking, well, you can't put the warehouse work for a bank teller. Right. So then she was devastated. I said, don't worry about it. There's other banks. She went to another bank and says, you've got experience from India and you speak this language and you've done this. I said, we want to hire you. She was hired on the spot. So not every person is the right one for you, right. but you got to keep on going. Don't give up. And eventually you meet the right person. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So next question from Arshad wants to know, why does it take so much time to break into the job market <clears throat> in Canada, given that there's so many opportunities out there? Well, people use untraditional methods to find work, and that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You can't just be applying, why applying, applying, applying. Like, this is, sounds horrible, but many times in Canada, it's an employer may not value the outside experience of a newcomer. I value that experience, whereby I'm thinking, great, to bring a language, different language, a different mindset, you can definitely grow and prosper from there. So a lot of times it's, you got to do your own networking and be your own salesman and make your own connections for it to happen. They're out there, they're hidden, but eventually, if you keep working at it, you'll be more successful versus waiting on the market to come to you directly. Thank you. Um, Faisal has a very good question. Um, <clears throat> if someone is a white collar worker, do you believe that it's okay to go for a part time or a blue collar job? Um, it demoralizes the person and feels that you are stuck in something that you never wanted to do. Yes. Okay. So I was saying Visa does not care where the money comes from. Okay. When your Visa bill comes in, they don't care if you work <laughs> at a white collar Fortune 500 company or if you worked at a, a packing boxes in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. All they care about, your bill collectors and stuff care about, is you're paying the 500 or $375, whatever it is, every month. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it may seem demoralizing, but you never know. What you could do is maybe there's a chance for you to move up into the operation of the organization, right? Like you may be working at Loblaws, but Loblaws has an accounting department, it's got a customer service department, it's got other departments. That's a start there. And when you're going for interviews, this is, um, as a recruiter, I'm gonna tell you that we look at your work history. If I see that for two years you haven't done anything, and I ask what you've been doing, and you say nothing. Looking for jobs for two I'm years. I'm <laughs> concerned that you're not the right person, right? Yeah. If you say, you know what, I did this survival job, I'm okay with that. It shows you have initiative, right? right? So, and also a real quick story on that of when I was doing the training, I did a networking uh, course for um, participants, just like employment access, and people came in, and most people don't like talking in a workshop. So part of the icebreaker was stand up and tell me your name, what you're looking for. Lady stands up, um, Becky says, hi, my name is Becky, I'm an accountant. And the lady besides her says, you're an accountant. My brother-in-law is um, has a uh, small company, a contracting company, and he wants, he's looking for an accountant. I don't know anyone, but can I have your name and number? You they go. exchange, and you never thought you'd find employment at a workshop right there and then, mm -hmm. but because she went there, she got employment, and she was employed. Good for her. So you never know who you'll meet on the job. Be open. And also, I don't think an employer would, I mean, if, for example, I'm, I'm not sure what your background is, but if you're, let's say, in accounting and, um, you know, you're not able to find work and you, I, I don't know, you were working <clears throat> on maybe like fixing cars or something like that, and you bring that up in an interview, um, if anything, the employer would be like, oh, how did you get into that? Exactly. You know, my car's been having trouble. Like, it's just a conversation starter. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't want, I think that people think that um, it'll look 
fat on them if you know they were doing pizza delivery or whatever mm -hmm. it is a lot of people do that as side jobs on the side just to make enough money yeah it's hard like times. people have full-time jobs and then they're doing like skip the dishes on the side and mm -hmm. it's so common now that it's uh, probably on everyone's resume now that oh you do lyft or uber or yeah. um you know skip or the even dishes or whatever it is sometimes like if you do for short of time you just don't put it because it's going to bring it down right but again, it wouldn't because it's it's very common for people to have side jobs now. Yeah. Because they just don't make enough money anymore. You put the water, right? Yeah. So it's it's becoming more and more common for people to have these jobs on yeah, the side. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Uh. Okay. So where did we go? Oh, sorry. So Mamadou has another question here. Um. He's worried about leaving his current job in the country. Um. And not finding a similar or better job in Canada. So how to overcome that fear? Mm, that's a tough one. Basically, I would say is work your plan. And by that, I mean is who are you connecting with? The job you're applying for in Canada. Now, there's um, sometimes there's restrictions whereby Canadians have to get the first dibs for applying for a job. I've experienced that before. Mm -hmm. uh, what you got to do is find out if the job's available. Find out what makes you so special that will take you if you leave your job. I tell people never leave a job cold once you have a job offer. Get it in writing. So do your research, apply online, and see who will take you. Find out through like the um, citizenship and immigration what is the process. Get the full details before you jump ship. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, all right. So Rohan has a question. How do I deal with the question? Do you have any Canadian experience when I don't <clears throat> actually currently have one? Oh. Have any? I don't, I don't. You know what? I don't know if employers are still asking that. I mean, they're really not supposed to. Um, some so. are, <laughs> but um, I can tell them that the experience I do have applies to the position I'm applying for, and I offer more by doing X, 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 or A, B, C, whatever. So really sell yourself. So downplay to have experience abroad. Now, <clears throat> if you are like an accountant, numbers are the same across the world. Yeah. Okay, one plus one is going to be two. I don't know how it's different in China and over here it's going to be different, right? So you have to, don't focus on that, but just talk about your experience. So maybe do the functional resume for now where it kind of hides exactly where and then if it comes out, it comes out. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Um, Shopa has a question. Does mentoring or volunteering experience help better in a resume? Yes, it fills the blanks. And we have a saying at keepingforward.ca who knows you, refers you. So think about it. If you're volunteering somewhere and then a job opportunity opens up, who are they going to most likely hire? The person that they don't know or see? Because when I looked at resumes when I was in recruitment, I just saw white paper, black text. But if I know the person, like Mary Smith, it's like, oh, I remember her. She was really a motivational kind of good person. You most likely want to hire her or send her for the position. Thank you. Um, Pankaj has got a great question here. What are some of the follow-up strategies to keep connected with the professionals in networking events after connecting in a particular event? Okay, <clears throat> that's good. So I have a course called Knockout Networking on keepingforward.ca and we teach exactly that. Now what I can tell you is when you go to a networking event, I tell people write down on the business card you get everything about the person. So example, name Jordan Smith, mm -hmm. man or woman, what is it? Jordan Smith. Mm, could be either. My daughter's name is Jordan, right? Exactly. So you put down Jordan Smith is a woman. She likes golf. She has three children. You're talking to her. She likes to maybe play cards. You put all that. Then what you do is when you follow up in your little business card stack, because you mm -hmm. start getting a lot of stacks, right? You pull up um, Jordan Smith and you send her some golfing. Hey, if I'm this article in golfing, did you see this? Maybe interesting. I'm not mm -hmm. saying what a job. I'm just saying, hey, it's an interesting article. They're more likely. Or if you're remember. LinkedIn, you can tag yeah. each other on it. So exactly. if you see an article, let's say, like you said in golfing, tag them on it, and they're like, oh, this person remembered. Exactly right. Yeah. So you want to keep in contact, and you find something that's good, helpful. And that's good. If they can't help you, you move on. And sometimes opportunities open up later on in life. They'll remember you. Right, awesome. but who knows you refers you, right? Awesome. So thank you, Colin. Um, you know, unfortunately that's all the time we have to take oh, yeah. questions. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it sure did. 
Uh, but again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask uh, Colin and you know where to find him. He's at keepmovingforward.ca. And um, just know that, again, thank you all for your participation. Uh, we wouldn't be here and <laughs> if yes. you weren't watching. Thank you, thank you. So again, um, if you do have any questions and you know, you can reach out. So is there a way of contacting me to your website? Yeah, it's definitely way. Okay, so yes, if you have any questions, you know, get in touch with him. Um, if you have any other, um, we actually have your old webinar up as well. Okay. So thank you. There's the card there, so you could go call in. One Ellen Collin at keepmovingforward.ca. Awesome, perfect. So, um, if you have any other questions regarding resumes, interviews, um, you know, just your first day at work or whatever it is, if job search related, you can go on our website, go on eAccess, and there's different tiles there. We even have past webinars on there. Um, I think we have your uh, how to be a knockout oh, networker yeah, what, oh, yeah, webinar yeah. on there as well. So check that out. Again, thank you all for your participation today. Um, you can stay connected with us on Instagram now, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Any of our upcoming events, whether they're in-house or online, they are always posted and advertised on our social media. Mm -hmm. um, before we go, Colin, I'll let you say whatever you need to say before we sign off. Yeah, so I just want to say to you a couple words. Yes, you can, and I know you can succeed. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day or evening ahead.